What's going on guys? Jacob here and today we're going to talk about cardio. I feel this is a topic that is widely misunderstood by many people and I'm going to quickly discuss uh, the ins and outs of cardio, uh, what it is, why we use it, how to use it and some considerations we need to have before we start implementing uh, a cardio routine. So firstly, cardio is simply a form of exercise and activity which contributes to our total daily energy expenditure. When we talk about total daily energy expenditure, there are typically four components of that. We have our resting metabolic rate, which is how many calories we would burn if we were just lying flat, not moving all day, just to process uh, and keep the body functioning, all the, all the vital organs. The second is our thermic effect of feeding, which is when we consume food, there's obviously a cost to the body in breaking down that food. It's about 10% of our total daily energy expenditure. Third is our activity thermogenesis. That is when we're performing formal exercise. So when we go to the gym, we lift weights, when we go to do cardio, when we go walking, running, it's the conscious decision to exercise. And another component of activity thermogenesis is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So all the calories that we burn, if we weren't resting, lying still, but we were actually up and about moving, doing those day-to-day -day tasks like walking, standing, fidgeting, me blinking, like all these kind of things, um, contribute to our non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So that makes up our total daily calorie burn. And this is where things are widely misunderstood because people think that cardio is this magic tool to incinerate fat and it's gonna you know, get them lean and feeling uh, you know, a lot better about themselves if they're going to do cardio then they're, they're melting the fat, right? Uh, however, cardio is just increasing our energy expenditure. And we're going to delve into this a little bit further, but when people perform cardio and they feel leaner, I will say that it's not necessarily the fact they're oxidizing fats, but in fact there's some water regulation effects going on and, you know, we feel a bit tighter. Um, obviously, you know, digestion and we're just, you know, eliminating some water, sweat, all those kind of things, uh, which can give the, I guess, placebo that we are, you know, getting leaner. And this is a, a big misconception. So then we need to look at why we would perform cardio. So, you know, many people perform cardio for the cardiovascular health related benefits. That is, you know, they want to improve uh, their health overall. And, you know, definitely cardio is a great tool to improve our health. And the second reason why people would perform cardio could be for the mood or therapeutic related benefits. You know, we get a release in endorphins, it uh, feels good, and obviously our mood picks up as a result of that. The third would be if somebody plays sport or has, you know, athletic endeavors related to, you know, their aerobic or anaerobic capacity. So they've got to do that uh, by nature of their sport. And the fourth, which is what we're going to you know, primarily discuss today, which is why most people perform cardio, is for the body composition benefits. That is, they want to get leaner, um, toned, lose fat, all those kind of things. So the first thing we need to talk about if we're looking to get leaner and lose fat is that calorie intake is in large going to drive body composition changes uh, in fat mass. That is our nutrition and creating a calorie deficit. So eating less calories than our body's burning so that all of the factors within our total daily energy expenditure should exceed the amount of calories that we consume through food and drink. Now, in relation to cardio, we need to then think about, okay, how much energy expenditure should we bring in uh, via activity? And I will say that the minimum effective dose is what we should be looking to achieve when starting a fat loss phase. We want to primarily let the fat loss occur with as minimal cardio as possible and allow the diet to drive that calorie deficit. Now the reason for this is that quantifying the magnitude of energy expenditure in cardio is very difficult for reasons we'll discuss shortly and reducing calorie intake is a much more accurate means of adjusting that energy uh, balance equation and can be a lot more predictable in you know determining uh, how many calories we're consuming versus how much we're expending. 
And again, some, some things to uh, keep in mind here are that if you have time constraints, that is you, you're you in a contest prep or you've got to make weight for a specific uh, you know, sport, then cardio might need to be brought on a little bit quicker to further that calorie deficit. And another factor is if you're a small female consuming very low calories uh, as a result of your body weight and size, then having some cardio introduced earlier into your fat loss plan may be necessary because it it's just not practical to bring calories down uh, to extremely low levels and that will affect adherence to the diet, which again is gonna you know, impact that energy balance equation and prevent fat loss. And the way I like to think about cardio in many cases is that it should be an ace up our sleeve. That is, we start with the diet, we play our hand there, and we eke out as much fat loss as possible before it becomes uh, you know, unpractical from an adherence standpoint, like I mentioned, and then we introduce cardio to you know, further the calorie deficit from there. If we play all our cards at once, um, cardio, or at least high doses of cardio, the adaptation process a lot quicker and progressing when we plateau is gonna be a lot more difficult and it's just gonna become extremely overbearing because we're gonna to need to do more cardio and then we're gonna to need to eat even less. So now we need to talk about what type of cardio do we introduce? Well, there's a lot of different modalities. Um, there's bike, walking, treadmill, uh, you know, boot camps, all these kind of things. Now we can break those down into some categories. We have high intensity interval training, otherwise known as HIT, and we have low intensity steady state, which is otherwise known as LIS. We also have moderate intensity steady state, NIS. Now, there's a number of benefits and drawbacks to each of these, so we'll start with HIT. High intensity interval training is indeed uh, very energy costly, not necessarily in the short term whilst you're performing it, but through what's known as EPOC, so excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Now what happens is when we perform high intensity interval uh, training, what's occurring at a physiological level is you know, starvation of oxygen through that you know, high intensity effort. The body then replaces that uh, energy and the oxygen over the course of time, otherwise known as the afterburn effect. Now, people often think that you know they're, they're boosting their metabolism by doing cardio uh, you know, in this manner, but in reality, you're burning less calories while you do it, more after. It's not necessarily magic because what matters most is the total amount of calories we're burning over the day. Now, when we compare that to low intensity steady state or moderate intensity steady state, um, we burn more calories during uh, those time frames and then obviously not as much after. Uh, but again, what matters most is how many calories we're burning over a 24 hour period. Now, some important things to consider when you're selecting which modality uh, to choose. In relation to HIIT, high intensity interval training is, as the name suggests, high intensity. So it's gonna be quite demanding and that means you gotta have a sound orthopedic profile. If you're doing sprints and things like that, you have to have a good gait, otherwise you're gonna run into issues. If you're overweight, you know, the high force impact could cause some joint related issues, uh, potentially injury and also time constraints. So if you are somebody who's pressed for time, um, then high intensity interval training could be a great alternative if you don't uh, have all of the hours in the world to, to walk and do a lower intensity session, which is gonna take you a, a greater duration. And whilst many people may look at this and see HIT to be you know, less than ideal, uh, if you're not performing high frequency resistance training, then you're not causing a lot of uh, you know, fatigue through that type of training, which means that high intensity interval training is definitely a viable option. And it can obviously lead to a different set of adaptations than lower intensities would, which could be beneficial from a health standpoint and a physical fitness standpoint. So it's definitely a viable option. However, like I mentioned, if you are somebody who's lifting weights regularly, performing uh, very fatiguing, overloading resistance training sessions, Adding in a lot of HIIT is going to hinder uh, your recovery, which means that your performance in your resistance training is gonna suffer. Now, your training, your strength training, should be the primary focus because that is what's going to keep your muscle around. What built the muscle will hold the muscle. So if we're seeing a drop in performance, you're lifting less weights because you're fatigued from the high intensity interval training, or you're just simply doing less volumes because you, you just can't perform the sessions anymore, or you're doing HIIT and then having to rest, 
then we have issues there because in terms of body composition, we want the diet to drive fat loss and the resistance training is there specifically to retain that muscle tissue. Conversely, lower intensity, steady state cardio uh, is extremely beneficial if you have more time, if you're somebody who is overweight, so you have joint issues, or you simply don't have the orthopedic profile to do those higher intensity sessions, and if you are training uh, pretty regularly and hard in the gym. So low intensity, steady state for my physique athletes, uh, bodybuilders, or anybody uh, that's looking to improve their body composition is typically my go-to uh, with high intensity interval training being a last resort um, if we really need to you know, add in something else and they're getting a bit uh, sick of the lower intensity steady state sessions. And finally, the biggest determining factor in which modality you choose and anything that we do uh, when it comes to training and diet should be preference. If you love high intensity interval training, you love that you know metal uh, burning lactic acid feeling, um, then, then do it. But just keep those other things in mind. And again, if you're somebody who just loves going for a stroll, taking the kids, and it's just an enjoyable experience for you to get outdoors and walk, then I suggest you know following uh, along with what you desire and what you prefer uh, and doing lower intensity steady state sessions. And some final considerations to keep in mind are that when we perform cardio, the amount of energy we expend uh, doesn't necessarily automatically uh, add to our total daily energy expenditure. I'll explain why. So the first thing that we need to understand is when we perform cardio, there is substitution. That is, we are not replacing the calories we would have otherwise burnt with more calories, but instead substituting the amount of calories we're burning through cardio um, instead of how many calories we would have burnt at rest. For example, if I burn 300 calories uh, in a one hour cardio session, but I would have burnt 70 calories uh, standing around at home or at work, then I don't just add 300 calories to my total daily energy expenditure, I would only add 230. The second thing we need to bear in mind is that there's a compensatory effect. That is when we perform cardio, Typically, there is a reduction in NEAT. So remember how I said that NEAT is all the things that we do, uh, standing around, walking, you know, fidgeting, all those kind of things. When we burn more calories through cardio, there is typically a compensation after the cardio is finished. That is, if you go do high intensity interval training, chances are you're not gonna go home and continue to stand around, walk throughout your house, clean the house. Um, you're not gonna be as active. You're gonna sit down and take a break. So if you had to burn, say, you know, 150 calories in a high intensity interval training session, and then afterwards, let's say that you normally would burn 70 calories, you might only burn 40 or 50. So there is, a, you know, a bit of a reduction in our total daily energy expenditure as a result of that. Finally, whether we do cardio fed or fasted really doesn't matter. It's how many calories we are burning during the cardio um, that contribute to our net energy balance that actually matters, not whether we do it fasted or fed. Now, when we do cardio fasted, the substrate that we are using is primarily fat. And this is where a lot of people uh, perceive fasted cardio to be uh, more beneficial because they're burning fat, right? However, what happens afterwards, again, the body is a very adaptive organism, the body will start burning more carbohydrates uh, as a result of that and less fat throughout the day. But as long as you're burning the calories, that's all that matters. And again, if you perform cardio fed, you are going to burn more glycogen, glucose during uh, the cardio, and then obviously more fat afterwards. Um, however, as I said, it's the amount of calories that you're burning. Some key considerations here are if you love doing cardio fasted and it sets your day up and mentally uh, puts you on the right path to adhere to your diet and you, know, you just enjoy that, then that's completely fine. If you're performing cardio uh, fed and you find that that's something you do enjoy and you get a little bit more bang for your buck, uh, you, you move a bit more and you feel a little bit more energetic, uh, that's also fine too. Just remember that when we do our cardio, we want to keep it as far away from our resistance training as possible so that we don't run into what's known as the interference effect. That is, you know, the, the fatigue and the adaptations from the cardio impacting our performance in the gym because remember, that's the key to uh, keeping the muscle and obviously achieving improvements in your body composition, not losing muscle tissue. A final note, when you do track your cardio, 
you need to be uh, consistent with the type of modality. If you're serious about your fat loss and you're not just doing this uh, you know, for enjoyment, but you wanna actually maximize your body composition, then you need to keep the modality consistent. You need to track the duration, the distance that you travel, um, the intensity, as well as the calories burned. And then when we wanna further uh, that energy deficit by increasing the dose of cardio, then we can simply increase intensity, or increased duration, um, and that will obviously lead to more calories burned. But it's important to measure uh, these variables and then track them because what gets measured gets managed. And if we're not uh, accounting for these things, then it's going to be very difficult to quantify the magnitude of uh, change that we're trying to elicit to the energy balance equation. And also, big note here, if you are you know, performing cardio, you're dieting, what's gonna happen as a result of the adaptations that occur during the dieting process and the lethargy that we experience when we're you know, dieting, we have low energy availability, it's important to track your daily steps because this can have a big, big impact on your total daily energy expenditure. As, uh, as we diet, there's a reduction in NEAT. So if you find that your fat loss is stalled, then it could very well be likely that your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, all the daily uh, steps that you're taking has come down. So we need to keep that consistent so that we can accurately assess whether or not we are making progress or we're simply burning less calories. So guys, I hope that was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and feel free to comment in uh, the comment section below if you have any questions or feedback.